It's my anniversary. So I launched this podcast on November 8th, 2022, one year ago. And honestly, I didn't really understand the depth of what I was getting into. It's much more work than I imagined, but I have loved every minute. The connections made and the conversations had and the insight gained, it's been great. So I just want to start this reflective episode because that's what we do here. We reflect by giving a shout out with major appreciation to my guests and all those who have fueled me and provided what I think is a service to those who are listening. The podcast is approaching 10,000 downloads, and that was my goal for the first year. And it's being listened to in 39 countries, particularly strong in the UK, Canada, Australia, and Puerto Rico. So thank you all out there. I have to say that never in my life did I think I would be sharing my voice in such a public way. And I think I may have shared in various episodes that public speaking was not something that I aspired to and uh, came with a lot of trepidation because my upbringing led to a lot of doubt of the value that I had to offer. Um, but this has been so gratifying, so satisfying, and so validating that one takeaway of many uh, that I hope that you get from listening is that those of you who struggle with having a voice, exercising your voice in any domain can shift. And of course, um, that you have had many moments of self-reflection that have led to personal and subsequently professional growth or move from professional growth to personal growth. Because as I repeat on this podcast, you can't do this work without growing. So today I'm excited to be with some of my guests who also happen to be my dedicated supporters of this podcast. And they are Dr. Lisa Newland, Adriana and Julie, Stephanie Blackwell, and Anthony Gaetani. So welcome again, and thank you so much for being here. So now let's do what we do. Let's reflect and rejoice. Um, maybe we could start by uh, my asking you, what did either you enjoy about participating in the podcast and recording your own episode uh, and your topic, and or what have you gotten from listening? Uh, I could go ahead and jump in. Thanks, Dr. Myers, for having me back. I'm really grateful to be here today. And I have to say, your opening really gave me chills. And it's very inspiring to see how much growth you put in. Thank you. Um, something that I've enjoyed. So my podcast that I did was on community. And I feel like even just now, and especially with what Dr. Myers just reflected on, she found a new community of her for herself. Um, and that's doing podcasting and being able to also network with new individuals and social workers that are in the field and maybe others that are in other helping professions. And that comes from building a community. Um, and for me, I really reflect and I take that into my interactions because, you know, we all do need a voice here and there are things that people are battling internally and sometimes they don't feel comfortable speaking about it. Um, so I feel like something that I've taken away from my episode is being able to create that space mm. for individuals and those that do need somebody to kind of listen to them um, and how I could reflect back on my episode and what did I take away from that is just my recent journey of starting out in the field of social work. I am a graduate. I passed my licensing exam, so it's very exciting and Yay. It took me a little bit through the onboarding process to actually start um, and to kind of get my feet in the waters now and be a professional. Um, so I did look from support. I looked to Stephanie, you know, I would call her up like, I don't understand, like, what's going on? You know, like, why is this onboarding process taking so long? I just want to, you know, start. I'm so eager. I'm so excited. So just having my sense of community and support through my family and friends, um, and even through the job itself, kind of reaching out and saying like, what's going on and, you know, having them keep me updated has been a great experience. Yeah. You know, well, you've all, always been really good at tapping into community, um, as the, uh, leader of the social work student organization, you know, you, you embrace that, um, you obviously built your own community while you were at Malloy and, uh, then subsequently at Fordham. 
And you've really modeled that. And um, I think that's why your episode, Adriana, entitled We All Need Community, you know, you were able to really reflect on that and offer, you know, how to do that to others and why it's so important, right? So that's your service. And that's one of your many strengths. Three, thank you. Yeah. For me, I think, you know, one of my biggest takeaways from the podcast so far is this the sense of validation you bring up so many different points in every episode but like especially in mine my episode was about dependency and you know how that interferes with my work and you know how you know got into personal stuff about me but like in every episode there is this sense of validation like adriana said that it gives a voice to um people which is really important um, I've shared your podcast with my coworkers here. We've listened to it together. Um, we've listened to it together at during lunch. Like, oh, what do you think about this? You know, you know, and it's great. You know, it really brings up a lot of great talking points, and it really gives us, you know, validates our concerns, whether it's working in the field, working together, um, and even personal stuff, stuff that you know I didn't know about my coworkers or talking points that we do share, and. Um, it's comforting. So that's been my, my, my highlight of the, um, both participating and, um, in the podcast and listening to it too. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And that's awesome to hear because that's, you know, one of my primary goals is self-awareness, building your self-awareness, right? The more that we understand ourselves, the more we can manage our experiences and our feelings and, um, shift perspectives that may need it to be shifted, uh, to be in better service to other people, but also to serve ourselves, right? Um, when we see things in different ways than we've been programmed to or experienced by our uh, our environment, uh, influenced by our environment to see things, um, that makes us feel better and um, have more gratifying relationships and, and an existence in this uh, challenging world. So I'm so glad and thank you for sharing it with your coworkers and colleagues as well. I appreciate that greatly. Um, but I think that, you know, one of the things that you touched on is that my goal is to broaden the listenership, not just to clinicians, um, but to everybody, because I think that even if you're not doing this work professionally, everybody can hear something about themselves in what's being said. I think that's what you're highlighting, right? Is that, you know, you learned about your colleagues on a more personal level, but um, it just reminds me like in the human behavior class that I teach when you're teaching about just that human behavior across the lifespan and you see the students kind of zone out or at least tune into themselves. It seems like they've gone away, but they're really going into themselves because how do you not think about yourself as you're learning about, you know, our functioning or how people operate uh, or move through this life? So, yeah, thanks. Thanks. I listen religiously every week and I look forward to it, especially on my Tuesdays from work. I have like an hour and 15 minute commute from work to campus at Fordham. Well, that's so why you're here, it, Stephanie. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I listen to it every Tuesday on my commute from work to school. Um, and it really, it's of course, picking back what Adriana said and what Anthony said, it's not only validating, but it's empowering. Right. And as a new professional, um, you know, I'm still a student in my in the master's program. It's also self-reflection, but also um, experience. Right. Like we all need a reminder of certain things um, every once in a while. So no matter how long you've been in the human services field or if you're new, like some of us, to me, it's just hearing other people's stories. It's just very um, empowering for a lot of different reasons. Um, some of your episodes, you know, I could relate to some of them I couldn't, but it's also just wonderful to hear other people sharing their stories, right? Sharing, sharing, knowing that you're not alone out there, because we all have moments where we think we're alone in going through what we're going through, especially a lot of the student series ones, um, episodes, we're not alone. And you basically put that out there that there's always somebody to support. Um, and there's always help available and that you're never going through something that you never have to feel that it's you're the only one going through that. So it's for me, it's really been beyond validating and very, very empowering, but also um, healing, right? Like my own professional and my own personal growth I've seen from some of the episodes I've done. Anthony and I have been on a few together. 
Um, just recently, last week's episode was one that we recorded way back when, when we were still students at Malloy in the very beginning of our internships to now we're in a master's program. So to see and hear the growth in us is very, very validating and empowering because you don't sometimes, you don't, as much as we self-reflect and we're learning to be more self-aware, we're not always in tune to that. So it yeah. has really helped us look back to see where we've been to where we're going and who, how do I want to show up when I come to work as a professional, but also in my personal life. So isn't that so nice that. to see? Oh, well, thank you for participating. But isn't that so nice to see your own personal development, right? Because when I know that people first, you know, embark on this career, it's the last thing that they can see um, because they're so caught up in their insecurities and their, you know, feelings of being incompetent. And am I ever going to feel, you know, good about what I'm doing? So it's really not that much later, right? That you're able to see how you've grown and developed and, um, you know, it's funny. Cause I always say like to clients in therapy, like who say, well, you know, how am I going to change? When am I going to change? And it's like, if it took you X number of years to develop into who you are, right. If you're a 41 year old, a 50 year old, a 20 year old, it's going to take some time to shift things. And on the other hand, you know, there are certain things or perspectives about ourselves that can shift pretty rapidly. Um, but also one of the things that I hear you saying and so appreciate is the sense of validation that you've experienced from listening and, because to me, that's um, that's a gift that I, I want to be able to pass on, right? I mean, I've had that experience and for other people to have that experience is so important because I often say, what do we all have in common in this world? I think we all want to be heard and understood. Who doesn't want that? It's almost, That should be added to the basic list of you know, human needs, the basic, you know, our basic human mm -hmm. needs to be heard and understood. And I would add now to that, right, to be validated. Who doesn't need have that need and desire to be validated in in various ways for different people but still the the essence is is in feeling that you're not alone in your feelings and that they are valid and genuine and and you know worthwhile yeah, and I think so. there's there's something in there for everyone, like you said, that you don't have to be a clinician, you don't have to be a social worker to get something out of it, because it's human nature, everybody wants to be understood and heard, as you said. So that validation is really, really powerful. So for me, I've appreciated um, just so many authentic spaces that were connected to the episodes. It was obvious that you were very intentional about creating that with your guests, that the platform that was your voice allowed for people to feel that they themselves could share, could reflect, and could be um, released, let me say, uh, an authentic part of themselves with a level of comfort. And that came across in a lot of the dialogue on the episodes that I certainly listened to. And certainly the dynamic that you and I have, that just lent itself to the conversation that we were able to have on the episode that um, I recorded. And I think that for me personally, as well as others, I would imagine is that it's important to connect to authenticity, however they can do it, right? And so being able to recognize that that's, if you deem that important, then you're going to look for that and you're going to receive from that. So just being able to hear authenticity in a voice, or if people, you know, saw I know some of the episodes people were able to see um, it because it was released on YouTube, but when you were just hearing things and being able to connect to story and narrative in a way where you felt that it was honest, that it was open, that it was vulnerable, that there's an appreciation for that. And so being able to create that in a space uh, with technology just really speaks to the importance of your desire to have that as part of your platform. So that was another added value. Well, appreciating the authenticity uh, has great meaning to me coming from somebody who I, you know, consider the epitome of authentic. So thank you, Dr. Lisa Newland, for, for, for saying that really um, touches me. Thank you. You're so uh, Stephanie, you alluded to a favorite episode. You have a favorite episode? I don't know if I actually have a favorite. I mean, I, like I said, I've taken away from each one different stuff um professional personal um so i yeah i really i don't know like I, in each time it's made me think and it some some of the episodes really make you go deep um and put yourself in other people's perspectives and i really enjoy that 
Um, I always considered myself a very empathic person. So to put myself in other people's and look from a different perspective, um, you've helped me go deeper with your podcast in doing that in some of the episodes. Um, the sibling abuse series um, on a personal level has really, really helped me in my own healing and my own journey. Um, so it's helped me become not just a better professional, um, but just a better person, I think. So um, into understanding what's been happening in my life for years that the dots never connected. So it's been really, really helpful. Um, well, I'm glad. Um, yeah. And I have to say that it was quite surprising that that series, uh, uh, each episode is the, the most popular series of, of all. Um, and I think that that is very telling to an audience out there who needs to hear about that topic and who relates to that topic. And um, I think I was first struck when I delved into the world of TikTok, which is uh, amazing for somebody who's so technologically unastute, mm -hmm. uh, I was, you know, noticing that when I was posting, you know, teasers for upcoming episodes, I would get, and I know this has a lot to do with hashtags, right? And I'm not proficient in that, but I was getting like maybe anywhere from 200 to 400 um, views. And when I posted my first one on sibling abuse, and of course, relevant to the hashtags and who was interested in that topic, I got 16,000 views. Mm -hmm. And so that prompted me to say, well, there's a series here, right? Because initially I was thinking of like, you know, putting out like two or three episodes. And I think now they're, you know, I'm, I'm up to seven or eight. Um, and I try and release one every five episodes or so about that topic. And wow. I've tapped into an audience that wants to tell their story. Um, so, you know, there's many episodes where I'm trying to impart some knowledge about, um, aspects of sibling abuse, but to, to, um, be able to uh, offer a platform for people to tell their story has been again, an, another gift. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm glad that it's reached you, uh, and obviously many, many others out there. You know, it's interesting when, um, I thought about asking you all about your favorite episode. I thought, well, what's my favorite episode? And, you know, they're all special, obviously to me in different ways. And I've enjoyed them for various reasons. Um, but I was really thinking about the one, I don't know if you listened to the one about Mara, who um, she did two episodes and one of them is called When Your Therapist Makes You Squirm. And I forget, I can't, I can't capture the, the episode of the second one. Um, this is the title of the second episode. But it's funny because I met her on a trip that I took to Oregon. Um, and I was doing many, many hikes and I came across her on a hike and um, we became fast friends and um, she's significantly younger than me. And she um, was just so well-versed as being a client in, in therapy. So, you know how we say seasoned professionals and I jokingly call her a seasoned client. Mm -hmm. And um, she became my marketer because that's what she does as a profession. Um, and so not only was she a marketer, my marketer, but, you know, I thought that she would be a valued participant. And just for me to engage on that level, right, where, where she was asking her burning questions uh, as a client about what she would want to ask a therapist based on her own experiences in therapy. And like, are all therapists thinking this or that? And, you know, what are you really thinking when a client says this or does that? Um, so that's like my major wheelhouse. And, and that was just a lot of fun because it was a professional you know, part of me interacting with a personal part of me. And it made me think about too, like where I want to go with this podcast is I would love to bring, infuse more humor and levity when appropriate, because sometimes tough subject matter is tough subject matter, right? And mm -hmm. it just doesn't lend itself to that. But um, my goal is to show more of myself. And again, that makes me think of the episode that I recorded with uh, a former cohort from a couple of years ago, who kind of instigated the idea for this podcast, who was so incessant and persistent about knowing more of me and how boundaried I am. And it just led to a whole discussion about counter-transference in the classroom. And I think that, I don't know if that's the title of it, that's all escaping me, but I think it was, oh no, it's, you want me to bear my soul, um, hmm. something like that. And so I do want to use myself more in that way, show more of myself, right? The various sides of me. And so I hope um, that that's part of what I continue to, to do, but I guess I'll end off this episode with what my other goals are. But that was just my reflection on my favorite episode. I read the Mara one, the second one, the rapid fire questions was, I thought was really enjoyable. And I think some of us that know you or had you as a professor, um, 
because you are always so non self disclosed, right? And we've seen you a different side of you be vulnerable with this podcast and open up that it's been, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it's kind of been refreshing, I guess, to see you kind of just let loose. Um, I mean, we know you as a professor, you know, we don't know you on a personal level, but we, now we kind of feel like we do. And we've always kind of thanked that cohort for trying to put this idea in your head that <laughs> should open up a little bit. Um, so we've always joked about thanking them, but it's true. And in your podcast from episode one to, I think, what are you up to 53, 54 right now? Um, 54 you, marks a year, right? But yeah. So it's, you, Wait, 54 or 56? Wait, I, <laughs> it's 54 sure. weeks in a 50, year, right? 52, 52 weeks 52, in a year. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> my mind just went totally blank. I was caught up in, well, I guess I know what I need to work on. Right. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> but we've seen the the you be vulnerable in a different space. And I think that's also been it, you know, enjoyable for those of you, for those of us that know you, at least. Well, that's interesting to hear. Thank you. Definitely. Because I remember doing coming to Malloy and first meeting Dr. Morris, I have to say I was a bit intimidated. <laughs> like sometimes, like, I don't know why, but I guess how you are so not in the classroom disclosing as much. And, you know, you are very, I love, and this is like the one thing I love about you is that when you are teaching, you are so like into the material to make sure that we're understanding and you provide so many different types of examples and bring your own experience into the classroom but I was like oh okay like Dr. Myers is a bit tough like I see this and then that always made me a little bit intimidated but then through continuing my education at Malloy and also learning more about you through the podcast definitely my perspective has changed and I know um I remember like even last year like I had um a little scenario situation come up and thankfully Dr. Myers was there because it actually relates going back to sibling abuse and like kind of things that I've experienced in my personal life so I would say that those series are probably also one of my favorite episodes um and kind of being able to go to you and see you and knowing like because even stuff was there and I was like I don't even want to talk to you stuff I actually want to go talk to Dr. Myers right now like she is my go-to person that I need to just like let out um so that has been really awesome and I thank you for that and um I wanted to other also share with my favorite episode was with Mr. Um, Silas Kelly and really listening to his story um coming and being a part of the foster system and just his achievements and how he never gave up and really like putting it out there of like the impact that social work had on him um I mean just like thinking about it now I have the chills again so it was just really powerful that episode um and I I have no words because it was just so strong and really impacted me and like listening and gave me another perspective um mm -hmm. helped me be more now that I'm really beginning into the fields helped you be you, you blanked out a little helped you be more white um, a little bit more like open-minded because I feel like in social work, when we talk about social work or just the beginning of social work and stuff, we're always kind of told like, oh yeah, like these are social workers, they're part of CPS, like the bad things, the negatives. Mm. Um, but I feel like Mr. Kelly really highlighted the positives of social work and being a part of the foster care system. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he was in the foster care system, right? Which was so powerful to hear a story um, with such a positive outcome, right? And so that was really refreshing. Plus he's an amazing storyteller. And so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when I heard him, I don't know if you were at our alumni event where he uh, came, we, uh, him and I were featured as podcasters to talk about, uh, I guess, you know, what led to podcasting and just our experiences with it. And he told a bit of his story there in, 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 in brief form. Um, and so, yeah, I thought, wow, he touched me in exactly the same way that you're saying. And like, I got to have him as a guest on the podcast. Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Have, like another episode of like listening to him and just even how both of you like and your experience even maybe um, of what it's like being a therapist and like kind of have like an interviewish kind of style of like. <laughs> new questions and then you kind of going back and asking him it'd be interesting and I, I love um there's not many males 
I also feel like in the field of social work. So I love when I'm able to speak to a male. Like I love like Anthony being here. It's like so powerful. I even remember um, in Fordham when I was a student ambassador for the program, uh, we were looking for another one. And I also kind of voiced that too. Like we have a lot of females and I think it's also important to make sure that we have a male voice you know, can also shut them out as well. So <laughs> absolutely. They are welcomed. Um, we need representation. Absolutely. Right. And and it's kind of curious because this is a female dominated profession. And I think that that says a lot about the so social construction of gender um, and, you know, what creates that. But um, I think that, you know, a lot of people who are working on certain issues, male or female, might benefit from working with a male social worker as well, right, who has a different lens and perspective and lived experience. And um, people need models. People need models. So, yeah, absolutely. So tell me about your thoughts on counter-transference and self-reflection. I mean, because that's what this is about, right? Like, uh, again, and as, as I'm trying to speak to a broader audience beyond social workers um, uh, or people on both sides of the couch, um, what do you think about it? And, and you know, what are, what are its benefits? What's rewarding about being self-reflective? What's challenging about it? Is it something you embrace? Do you still kind of defend ag uh, against it a little bit or at certain times? In in my experience, um, I think it depends on the situation. I think at times the self-reflection of it really helps because sometimes when you're in it, you don't realize that it's kind of transference at first until you do the self-reflection and you have to kind of do the work. Like you don't know what's hitting you. Like, why am I reacting like this? Like I've, I've, I still have that. Um, and then sometimes you do notice it right away. So I, I think it depends, for me at least, it depends on the situation. And, and I still find some some moments are more easy to embrace or to face um, or like to put the work in and do the self-reflection. And there are some moments where I, I through self-awareness and self-reflection, I had to self-talk and say, Stephanie, you're avoiding this. Why you have to go through it to move forward um, and to really understand what is happening internally, physically, why this client is, you know, pushing you up against a wall like this. So it really, for me, it's really situational and depending on what it is. And there's moments where I embrace it because I know I'm going to grow from it. And then there's moments where this is really hard. Like I'm not ready to deal with this yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, quite natural, right, that we can be on either side of the spectrum of engaging it or avoiding it. And for me, it's always checking in to see, okay, do I have what I need, the capacity to engage, you know, and be very aware of when I am avoiding what that is, what it's about. Um, and then quite honestly, just saying, I don't have time for that right now, <laughs> you know, and I, yeah, I know I can own what I need to own, but I, yeah, I don't have time for that right now. And just engaging whatever else needs to be done in the moment, coming back to it later, you know, but that's also part of the reflection for me, right? You know, it's just kind of recognizing, you know, some of those dynamics at play um, and then catching up to it uh, at a later point and deciding who to uh, bring into a process of, um, of some of that dialogue. Because for me, a lot of that processing is internal, but then very um, deliberate about who I'm sharing with, that close, close, close person. Um, and sometimes it could be my husband. Sometimes it's that good, good girlfriend. Sometimes, you know, it's other persons in that support network who I'm releasing uh, certain things with and getting support from once I realize, you know, um, what it is that I need, right? So yeah, it's that dance. And sometimes, you know, I'm for it. And sometimes I'm just not. <laughs> So there might day there might be days that you can't tune into the podcast and say I'm not going there today. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, right. we're not doing that. We're not doing that right. today. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. Well, that's part of self care too, right? Is knowing yeah. knowing yeah. when you're ready to do it and accepting when you may not be. Sure, sure. I've definitely become more self reflective as I'm working, you know, with my clients. But I noticed that, like, even working with other staff. Um, that's been extremely helpful. Like we've had, I've had a lot of 
different stuff going on at work these past couple months. And then, you know, I've been taking the time to say, why is this bothering me so much? Why am I getting so frustrated? What is it about this person that's just making me angry or upset or emotional? And that's been really helpful for me because, you know, I don't have to, you know, I can present to my clients and, you know, we can have conversations, I can help them. But like, you know, if I'm, you know, walking around the office angry and frustrated, they'll see that. Um, clients see that and staff sees that too. So my ability to um, reflect, self-reflect and recognize, you know, what, you know, what is it about the, you know, this particular, you know, person, my boss, my supervisor, whatever that's bothering me is, has been really helpful. Cause I'm like, okay, it's not them. It's, it's more, you know, on my work and this is what I have to work for um, and work towards. So it's been extremely helpful. And I think in, in the episodes and even in your class, um, you know, I felt very empowered, like Stephanie said earlier, like I've never felt like intimidated. You have been so um, encouraging, like since I only had one semester with you and I feel very, um, <laughs> I feel like I had one, you know, just reflecting on college, like, you know, one semester with you, but like, I feel like I learned so much because you really fostered an environment that allowed us to grow and recognize how important self-reflection is. So bringing that into my MSW year, into my work has been really, really transformative. Wow. Well, thank you. And um, yeah, thank you. I strive for that. Um, that that helped to um, moderate or mitigate Adriana's comment about me being tough, which I'm going to perseverate on later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you. So where do we go from here? What... Um, what would you like, where would you like to see this podcast head? So one of the things I was thinking about is um, if, if you're noticing, I don't know if you're getting comments through uh, some of the social media um, platforms for people who aren't in the field and kind of gauging some of their responses or their reactions. So to hear what you mentioned about TikTok and the response to certain hashtag and kind of gauging interest based on that, it would be interesting to see, you know, how to determine planning for content based on some of that feedback. So other than like monitoring hashtags and responses, are there other ways that you're kind of noticing comments, feedback for people who are not in the field? Because I think that would be interesting to kind of see where that feedback kind of steers, you know, next steps and directions. Yes. Um, so that's a great point. And I have to say that I need to do a lot of work with social media because mm -hmm. um, the I my followership on social media is um, not where I would like it to be. And mm -hmm. so that I can gain uh, and garner that kind of feedback. Um, and thankfully, the numbers on social media don't reflect the listenership, <laughs> the listenership, right? The audience out there. But how can I... Um, work on that so that I can get that kind of feedback because it seems to me that the people who are listening thus far are pri primarily uh, professionals, not just social workers, but people mm -hmm. in the helping professions, generally speaking. And it is on TikTok as opposed to Instagram and Facebook that um, the lay population is more so responding. But again, you know, the, the mm -hmm. greatest response has been around the sibling abuse uh, episodes. So um, that's a great, you know, thought and a great suggestion and an angle towards which I'll lean. I see a lot, um, you know, not like of any comments on like your social media or anything, but I do see a lot of people, social workers, particularly like writing how they're changing their career paths. They've been a therapist for 20 years, but now they want to do something else. And they've had a lack of experience. They've only done therapy, but they want to do something else. Um, and like, I've noticed that like, you know, even in my family, my brother's a social worker, he's taking a dramatic shift in the type of work that he's doing. Um, and he has a lot of feelings about it. So I feel like, you know, his ability, I mean, you know, giving people not tips, but having that conversation, like, you know, making that big shift because social work is, is such a big, extensive field. Like, Absolutely. Can, so, you know, my, you know, my brother, as an example, is taking such a big change in his career path, still doing social work. Um, but now he he went from working in, in um, psychiatric social work to now um, higher education. 
Um, he's going to be director of field education back ah. in, in D.C. So, you know, that's like a huge step for him, one that he's willing to take. But a lot I've noticed a lot of people comment, like, how do we, you mm. know, what tips are there to starting? And you have the, you know, you, you're motivated to change, but like when you only have expertise or experience in one, you know, mm. aspect of this big mm. uh, field. Well, so, maybe you know. should be putting me in touch with your brother so I could have him as a guest on the podcast and we can flesh that out. Uh, that would... He would. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Because I know that he's a follower uh, on, on Instagram. So uh, I, I hope that he would be interested. That's awesome. Any other thoughts for like burning topics that you think, you know, there's a need for out there? And mental health, anything on the mental health. I think we're in a mental health epidemic. I think people are struggling. I think as much as we have progressed, um, stigmas are still out there. Mm. So people are still suffering in silence. So mm. it's still working on getting the word out there. Um, I'm doing a lot of work right now for suicide awareness. I'm doing a walk in on Sunday, actually, to raise some awareness. But I really, at Fordham this semester, I'm taking a su the suicide um, assessment class. And it's really opened my eyes to a whole new side of the mental health and what people are going through. Um, and I've really de been devoting a lot of work to the mental health side and mental illness, especially with I work um, in a homeless shelter for women that there's a lot of mental health and illness um, issues. Mm -hmm. So it's really become a good um, focal point for me at this time. But we're in a, every, a lot of people are struggling. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Our social, social, political, cultural climate is uh, in major turmoil. And um, absolutely. And I will take that um, to heart and I will put that into action. And I think that um, in addition, you know, as I said, to showing more of myself, to cover topics that speak to a broad audience, to bring issues that we all struggle with to the forefront is, you know, where I see, you know, me going and continuing. So I can't thank you enough for spending this time with me um, and reflecting and for uh, being such avid supporters and spreading the word and doing all that you do to uh, make my work so rewarding. Um, thank you, Adriana, Stephanie, Anthony, Lisa, um, and I am sure that um, since we have community, that we will stay in community and that we will um, cross paths many, many more times uh, this coming year. Thank you for having us. For sure. Thank you.